video is going to be um, pretty short and sweet because the Excel assignment for this week is going to be um, not too difficult. So I'm going to be giving you the um, data is going to have a, just exam score. And what I want you to do is calculate um, or use formulas to calculate the mean standard deviation and then the z-scores for each of these scores. So the z-score is basically just standardizing um, the scores to tell you how they relate to each other. So when we um, when we calculate the z-score we're going to need so the mean and the standard deviation and then the score. So we're going to first calculate the mean and standard deviation. That's what we use this formula. Um, we'd start off by doing a histogram of exam score. So you're going to, just like we learned before, you're going to hit insert and then go through the histogram. And then it will give you a histogram. This, I've, um, I've deleted a lot of the, the data that you guys will have. I think um, I gave you uh, 100, a sample of 100. So your distribution is not going to look like this. Um, but it, when you do finish getting that histogram, you're going to have to upload it. So you can name it um, the distribution of exam scores. And then you can calculate the mean. So this is the statistical um, symbol for mean. Um, and all statistical symbols, like SD for standard deviation and M for mean, should be italicized when you write this up. So you don't have to write anything specific up here, but when you will be doing your application assignment, where you do a write-up, you'll be expected to um, use proper APA format in your write-up. So for mean, you can use equals average, and then you select which numbers go there. So that's just the range of numbers. So that should be your, um, your formula. You'll have a lot more in that column to include, but um, I only have down to row 17 to include, so that's all I'm going to put here. And then for standard deviation, you can use um, this formula, but just so you understand, um, there are other options here. Um, you either want to go with this one, or if your version of Excel doesn't have that, just use the the S version, the dot S, because that means sample. Um, dot P means population. So we're going to use the sample. But for, if you have just the the regular format, it just gives you the sample version anyway. So again, you're going to just use that one if possible. So, and you're going to just select the same column of data to get the standard deviation. And if it doesn't show two decimal places, you'll want to make sure that you reduce that so you know what numbers that you're supposed to put into place. Um, now if you um, go up to the z-score column, you'll need to use the formula standardize. And this gives you what you need to use. So to use the formula standardize, you first have to include x, which is score. So this is the score. And then the mean is this number, and then the standard deviation is this number. You'll just have to make sure that you include the dollar signs so that when you do the drop down, 
it still knows that you need to stay on these numbers specifically instead of pulling down as well. So basically when you scroll down or when you pull down, it will not change from pulling down here or here. It will stay stable. This one is more dynamic and it will pull down for including each of these as a score. So that should be your formula except with, um, I believe it's 101, since you have the top row is variables, should be A101 and then this should be the rest of your formula to standardize and then give you negative 0 0.41 and then you're going to go to the bottom right corner, double click and it will fill down to the last, um, the last row. Now you have these numbers, let me kind of explain what this means. So when you look at a distribution, your mean, um, if you, let's say you had a, um, a normal distribution, then your mean right in the center, just mean, median, and mode are all the same in a perfectly normal distribution. And then this is telling you how many standard deviations you are away from the mean. Okay, so 71.75, and this is 56. So how do those compare? 56 is 1.72 standard deviations below the mean. That's why it's negative, okay? So the z-score you have to include whether it's negative, um, otherwise it will be considered positive. So you don't have to put plus when you type it in, don't put plus, but if it is a negative, you still have to put the negative. So looking at 68, that's very close to the mean, but it's below it. So negative 0.41 makes sense, right? So it's almost a half a standard deviation below the mean. And if you look at um, this, the standard deviation is 9.14, half of nine is four and a half, so it's um, not quite that much below this number will be the score. And that makes sense, right? Because if you subtract this minus this, we have 3.75. So you would expect the, um, if this is, if this makes sense, you would expect it to be um, less than half of of this number away from the mean, okay? So 71.75 is 3.75 away from 68. Um, you subtract that, so that makes sense for this problem. So z-score is negative 0 0.41 um, standard deviations from the mean, okay? so. 88 is higher, so that z-score is going to be positive. Um, let's see. 71 is very, very close to the mean, so that number is very, very close to zero, but it's still slightly less, so it's very um, a small um, deviation from the from zero. Now, if the score was 71.75 then the um, the z-score would be exactly zero because that is the mean so I hope that makes sense the, this should help you answer those questions once you fill all that out you'll have to answer about some of the different scores and what's the z-score for this and what's the z-score for that um, and you'll have to upload your histogram and give me the mean standard deviation and the number of participants so in this example I have used 16 participants because there are 17 rows and the first row is a, not a participant the first row is just um, variables okay so short and sweet 
it shouldn't be too bad. If you have any questions, just let me know. Um, feel free to text the number that I put on the front of the course. Um, and I hope you guys have a great week.